Yeah, and I've maybe met one, two, three, four. A person of taqwa, a person who's measured in his words, they're careful what they say. Everyone who you ever know who met that person speaks highly of him in, his, in terms of his worship, in terms of his khuluq, in terms of his business, in terms of his trade, in terms of his family, in terms of his classes, in terms of his teaching, in terms of their attendance. Taqwa, it's a powerful thing. When you see it, you will know it. You're going to remember what I'm saying to you now. When you meet that one person who you feel, subhanAllah, that person has taqwa, who you would give over everything because you can trust them, you feel within them that love, that connection that you have sat with him 20, 30 seconds, and right away your heart goes fond to him. It's very rare. Ahlul ilm possess that. And I'm sure Brother Saeed, with some of his travels and some of the teachers that he has met here or overseas, you find certain teachers. Have you met a Shaykh al Uthaymeen, Brother Saeed? MashaAllah. Rahimahullah. Shaykh al Uthaymeen, have you heard this name before? Shaykh Muhammad Saleh ibn al Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah. He was in Saudi Arabia, and I'm not a Saudi trained cleric. Like, you know how they write in the media? Saudi trained cleric. No, I'm not one of them. But when I was going to Umrah a while back, <coughs> by chance a sheikh, I had never seen a picture of him, I had never met him, I had never had any idea of what he looked like. And wallahi, wallahi al-azim, I tell you in this blessed masjid, in this blessed place after Salat al-Maghrib, I saw Sheikh al uthaymeen enter from Bab al-Fatah in Mecca, and in my heart, that's Shaykh Al-Taymin. Wallah. And I ran up to him. And by the time I caught him, there was a hundred people. I missed it. Missed that initial chance of meeting him. And then he did his tawaf and we did our umrah. And right away, without even having said a word initially, or spoken to him, or sat with him, or had lunch with him later as we did, just right away, you fell taqwa person of knowledge, a person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you in Surah Fatir that those who fear Allah the most min ibadihi ulama are those who have knowledge. Yaqsha min ibadihi ulama. They are those who have the most fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Piety in the way of Allah azza wa jalla. When you see and sense a person like that, your heart feels it. And it's rare that you find that. So when Imam al-Shafi'i tells you that the person of knowledge, the people of ilm, the more their ilm is in practice, the more they are near Allah, and the more knowledge they have, the greater their taqwa. They give everything. Third characteristic is that they learn more than they teach. That's important. Many of us, we come to a situation where you begin teaching and you begin translating and you begin sitting and talking to people that you begin to forget your self-development. Ahlul ilm are not like this. When you read stories about Shaykh al-Albani or Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen or Shaykh bin Baz, rahimahumullah ajma'in, you continue reading until the last days of their life. They were writing, editing, counseling, lecturing, speaking, teaching, to the last moment of their life, people asking them fatwa. Al-Imam ibn Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah, he comes to the moment of his death. <coughs> and they say to him, Ya Imam, you are near your death. Let us bring you some water. So we make wudu for you. <coughs> and at that moment, he didn't have the ability to make his own wudu. His body was immobile. So he says to them, La, just bring me some turab, dust, I'll make tayammum. Now, subhanAllah, in that situation, nearing the moments of his death, he's still teaching them fiqh. In his madhab, if you cannot make wudu for yourself, make tayammum. Just touch some dirt. 
So even at that moment of death, just minutes away from death, he's still teaching subhanAllah. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, after he was stabbed, after leading Salat al-Fajr in the masjid, a murderer seeks to end his life. <coughs> Abu Lu'lu' al-Majusi stabs him in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu He's laying in the arms of his son, Abdul Rahman. And he says to him, Ya Abdullah, da'ratsi'at turaq. Don't hold me, leave me laying flat on the ground, put my head on the ground, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may look upon me as a weak person, as a weak person, and be merciful to me. Last moments of the life, you see these people, up to the last moments, teaching, educating, bringing about a spirit of change in others. And that is a sign in the scholar. Ma'al mahbara ilal maqbara. From the moment we begin to carry a pen until we enter into the grave, we are in that same condition of learning and teaching. That is the way of a true scholar. So who do you look for to today in the world? Not many scholars in Toronto. Not any, right? Very little. The word scholar, alim, has different you know, meanings. At universities, it means one thing, a PhD student or a candidate, someone who has passed their dissertation. But it's a reserved word in Islam. You know, we, we have sometimes very big words, imam, sheikh. I, I really don't like when you call me sheikh, brother Said. <coughs> you know, it's a really, really big word. I'm not that old yet, first of all, <laughs> from that side. And from the other side, you know, the sheikh, it's in our community as Muslims, it means someone who's endowed with serious knowledge. We're still beginning knowledge. But inshallah, in the future, Brother Yahya. It's always Brother Yahya. No shake and bake, just Brother Yahya. Big words are sometimes used for little people, and it's not meant to disrespect anyone. Sometimes it's a humble person, and you find Mufti, Maulana, Al Azim. Big words for miniature people. Not in their tuqa, we don't talk about their heart with Allah, but we talk about their place in the history of Islamic scholarship. Yani, a person who is giving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowledge in one scale cannot be equated to another one. You have a mufti in one place, it means under traditional senses, someone who is responsible to give the religious rulings on all matters. Here you find a masjid that has 30, 40 people, the imam is mufti. Nah, there's a different scale, there's something wrong. The usages of the words have to be coherent together. And this is what makes a lot of people mixed up. You and I, we become mixed up. The brother said he's a mufti. I went and asked him. He said, it is divorce. Khalas. <laughs> Family's finished. <laughs> the mufti said, la. There are serious matters that have to be dealt with serious people. So when you look in your life,